What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. Video every day this week. I hope you guys are enjoying it. We've got another couple before we get to the end of this week's daily videos. Video every single day coming for you guys. I hope you've been enjoying it. If you have, make sure you take a second, go hit the like button for me because it helps my video uploads and it helps my channel and I appreciate it for you guys who have done it. Thank you very much. So today we are talking Instagram and specifically the settings that you should be using for your photos if you are going to post them to Instagram. Now, for my video today, I'm talking about Lightroom. We're assuming that people are exporting their photos from Lightroom, like so many of us do, and we then want those photos to look as good as they possibly can on Instagram. Have you guys ever got a photo, looked at it, and think that is fantastic? Then when you put it on Instagram, you're looking at it again, and you're thinking, yeah, like, oh, I thought it was good, and now it's rubbish. I thought it was sharp, and now it looks soft. It's got funny colors to it and it didn't before when I looked at it on my computer screen. Well, chances are that could be happening because you have not used the most optimum settings for Instagram. Now, many of you guys will realize that Instagram will have to do something to photos. It will have to compress the files before it displays them on its platform. The reason for that is that thousands, millions of people might be uploading high resolution photos to Instagram. And if they try to display every single one of those photos at the full file size and resolution it would probably crash their platform like one second to the next so pretty much every file or in fact i think every file and i'm going to talk about that later on that goes onto instagram gets compressed and that's why you want to try and make sure you're using the best possible settings we're going to talk about that today to hopefully help you look at your photos on the computer and then look at them on Instagram on your phone and think, yes, that still looks good because that's what we're trying to achieve, right? We want our photos to look as good as possible. So first things first, those of you guys who don't know, you can find me over at Instagram. The page we're mostly going to be talking about today is this one right here, at Rob Sambles Sport. You can also find me in two other places. You can find me at Rob Sambles. And you can find me at Scorchers Photog, which is the basketball specific channel for the Surrey Scorchers. Go make sure you're following those, especially the Rob Sample Sport one, because that one's got the photo that we're talking about today in the video. So it might help you have a look at it and you can check it out afterwards. So make sure you go follow me at Rob Sample Sport if you haven't already. So first thing that we're going to talk about is the crop that you use for your photos. Now, this is something that I've adopted very recently. Up until this point, I would take my photos pretty much kind of any way you wanted, and I would put them onto Instagram. And if it was a landscape photo, great, it kind of fit. If it was square photo, perfect, it did. If it was portrait, I would have to use their kind of option to try and fit it on. But, but I found that frustrating. And so what I've been trying to do lately is to crop my photos to the five by four aspect ratio. The reason why you can do that is because it gives you the most screen space when your photos are then displayed on Instagram later on. Now, if I show you what I mean on my Phone. Previously, I would post an image onto Instagram and I would go in and I would say, right, okay, cool. Well, the standard aspect ratio is given me as a square, but that isn't really right. So instead, I'm going to have to press this icon over on the left, which is the kind of two squares. You press that and it transforms the photo for you. It allows you to try to fit it into the frame. Now, that, that's great, but it isn't always perfect. Sometimes you're missing bits or you've got to kind of decide which part of the photo you want. And the way you can avoid that is by making sure you crop your photo to the best aspect ratio for Instagram whilst you're still back on your computer, whilst you're still on Lightroom. So now what I've been trying to do is even if I've got a landscape photo, yes, of course, I still want that landscape photo because that's how I might want to display it on other platforms, but I'm also creating a five by four crop version of that same photo. If I do that with my photo of Craven Cottage in the evening, yeah, great. It kind of changes it to an aspect ratio that I wasn't really planning for in the image but it still looks great and it gives me something which I can use on Instagram. In terms of the rest of your editing process there's not really much to change. You edit your photo however you normally would, you use your colours, your everything else the same as you would do. You don't really need to change too much of that but what does become really important is the settings you use when you export. So if we jump back into Lightroom and I'll show you some of what I'm talking about and we will literally go through the export settings one by one all the way down and I will show 
show you the settings that I use for Instagram. Okay, so once we've got our photo, we've got it set to the five by four aspect ratio that we are after. We open the export box. This is where we go if we want to export our photos. Now the first section at the top of this is called the export location section. Now really all that does is chooses where you want the photo to be saved to. So you might want to create yourself a separate folder for, for Instagram photos. You might decide you don't want to, you just put it wherever you want it to go. But wherever you want it to get saved to, that's where you set that up in that section, right? The next section is called file naming. Now this is where you can let the system know what you want your file to be called. Now. I, I use this because I always try to rename the photos for Instagram with something that tells me that is the Instagram version. The file quality won't be quite the same, and of course, as we talked about, the crop won't be quite the same. And so I want that to be specifically the Instagram version of the photo, and I still maintain the other photo somewhere else. So I always include something to do with Insta in the file title when I'm renaming the file. The next section is called video. Don't need to worry about that for Instagram photos because we're not doing anything with a video, it's an Instagram photo. So then we go on to the file settings. Now this is one of the more important ones. Now I have an opinion on this which differs to a lot of what else you will find on YouTube. A lot of people have an opinion that you should set your photo quality to 76%. The reason they say that is because they believe that that gives you the file size that will kind of almost bypass the algorithm for Instagram and it means your photo won't get compressed. I however after a fair bit of reading I have a different opinion on that. I, I don't think Instagram is, is clever enough for want of a better word to distinguish between different file types like that. It takes your photo and it compresses it. So in my mind whatever photo you've got is going to take it and it's going to compress it. Which means if you are taking a photo that you have already preset to a 76% quality it's going to take that photo so at 76% quality and it's going to compress it. Whereas if you give it a file that's at 100% quality, it's going to take that file and it's going to compress it. So which photo would you rather have? 100% quality compressed or 76% quality compressed? For me, it's 100%. So I always set that file quality to 100. I don't change it at all. The other thing which I do just check in here, it's pretty much always set to it by default. So you shouldn't have to worry, but just check the color is right. Generally speaking, the opinion for Instagram is do you want it kept as the S RGB? Just leave it at that profile. That's going to be the best one for Instagram. And in fact, that's the one I use for pretty much everything else anyway. Okay, then we move into image sizing. Again, this one's really important for Instagram. So image sizing. Now, this is where you want to resize the photo so that it is the best possible fit for Instagram. Now, the width of the photos that Instagram will post onto its platform will be 1080 pixels wide, so 1080 pixels wide. Now, of course, if you're using a portrait image or the 5x4 cropped that we talked about, that's going to be the short edge will be the width of 1080 pixels. Of course, if you're using a landscape photo, it would be the long edge, which would be the 1080, whichever way it's the width that's important here. So you want to set the width of your photo to 1080. For this example here, our photo is cropped five by four. So we want the short edge, the width of that photo to be 1080 pixels wide. For me, the resolution I set to 240. You can play around with that if you want to. I haven't noticed much difference when I've been testing it myself. So I go with 240. I'll let you guys have a play around with that one to find where you think your perfect sweet spot is. Okay, the next section is called output sharpening. Now I do sharpen my photos on export from Lightroom when I'm going to use them for Instagram. You can of course sharpen photos in the editing module itself in the development module of Lightroom but whether I've done that or not I will also sharpen to the standard profile when I'm exporting for Lightroom. I find that helps give those photos that little extra crispness when they're going into Instagram so I do that on export. The next few sections are a little bit less important when it comes to this for me. The first one is metadata. Typically, I do want all of the metadata included with the file. The one after that is watermarking. Sometimes I use that if it's an agency's photo or something like that. If it's just one of my own photos, then I won't put a watermark on it when it goes on Instagram. If you guys want one, include it. If you don't, don't. 
simple as that and the last one is post processing this this is basically where you can set up like something you want to happen to the files after they've been exported for me for this don't do anything with that i just leave that don't need to worry about it when they're going to instagram now if you follow those set steps and use those export settings from lightroom i think you will find that your photos come out the best possible way that you can for instagram now of course some photos won't fit everything we talked about some photos just simply will not work in a five by four format if they don't don't worry you can just put them on there as a square as a landscape photo it does mean you're going to get some of those white bits at the top or bottom of the frame and of course you won't get as much real estate on the instagram page as you would if you had a five by four cropped image so just keep that in mind you want to get as much impact as you can from your image when you scroll through if you move through on instagram and you look at a feed for example you can see one of my landscape images and then we move up to one of my five by four images you can see the difference in the amount of space that it takes up on the screen so there we go so guys that is the settings that i use when i'm posting photos to instagram i hope you found that useful i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do take a second hit that like button and please if you have not subscribed to my channel take a second and do it loads of other videos to come and hopefully you'll enjoy some more of them in the future guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys i will see you tomorrow making it as easy as possible for you guys today. If you want to subscribe, you hit this button right here. If you want to check out one of my other videos, you can check that out right here. Go have a look. I'm sure you're going to enjoy them.